Okay, in this second part of this video, what we will do is that we will create the total sales. Every time you change from one city to another city, it will show me at the bottom the total sales. Here it's a little bit more involved, so I'm going to explain the different pieces. First of all, we have a few things down here. Let me explain what they are. One of them is the city binding source. The city binding source is what? Is the one that binds the data from the table, from the table in the database with the things that you display, see here in the, on the screen. So when do we want to do the calculation? When we do the calculation every time I go from one city to another city or the position has changed. All right, so that's one piece. The other thing here that I need to take care of, if we look at the data source here, if I click on the edit in the designer, pay attention to this, this is important. What we have in here, we have columns and each column has a property. For example, if I click on this and right click on it and click on properties, view properties, you'll see that this is a column, it has data type, it has uh, values and so forth, default values and so forth. For example, this data type is system.n32, this is important. And we've seen that n32 in our programming before, it's an integer basically. And the default value is DB null, okay? But I can change that. I don't want it to be DB null. I can make it, for example, any value I want. It means that if there is nothing in my, the database, what value would I get? What value would I'll, uh, the program will give me? All right. What we're interested in, this same thing in here, if you right click on this and click on properties, you'll see that this one is what? This is a string. Again, we've seen that. Now the one that I'm interested in is this one, total sales, because I want to calculate the total sales per cities. So you right click on this and look at the properties. Now I have different type. Again, some of you might have seen that. This one is what? System decimal, okay? This is important. And the default value, I put it to zero. Now, in your case, it says DB null, so change it to zero. Why do you do that? So you don't get an error if it's a null value. If the user didn't put any value, you make sure that the system give you a value of zero. Okay? All right. So that's what I want you to look at. Pay attention to that. Why? Because when I get the data from the database, when I get the value from the database, I need to know what type they are. So I do the proper conversion. Otherwise, you will get an exception or you get an error. All right. So that's one piece. So we got, first, we know that the binding source plays a role in this. Every time I change from, from one city to another city, I need to do some calculation. And I need to know the type of fields that I have so I can convert them properly. Now let's go back to the form that we are doing the calculation in. Here is my city binding source. If I double click on this, you'll notice that now I can enter code for the binding source. And it says city binding source current change. Mean what? The current record has changed. When the current record has changed, what do you want to do? Now I already have the code. So I'm going to just copy the code because I already have the code and I'll explain what's going on. Because I'm creating a total, I define a variable called total. Notice here, what did I define it as? Decimal, not double. Because remember what was the dot type in the database? It was decimal, it was not double. And then if you're trying to convert decimal to double, I don't know why, but here in C Sharp I was getting exception. So the proper casting was not working. Okay, so you want to make sure that the, to be on the safe side, use the same types that you have in the database. So I got decimal, we define a total. And what about this here? Here it says double customer binding sword that position greater than zero. What does this thing mean? Table customer binding source, remember when I go to the design, 
this data grid is binded to that table customer binding source. The data grid is binded to this. And the code that you just seen, it says, okay, I want to do the calculation if the position is greater than minus one means I have record for that city. If it's greater than minus one, that means I have record for that city. If I don't have, if it's below zero, that means I have no record and I don't need to do the calculation. All right? So if I have record for that, sit, for that city, I have customers for that city, what do I want to do? I want to do the calculation. What do, how do we do the calculation? It means basically you go through each record, get the value, add it to the total. Go to the next record, get the value, add it to the total. Go to the next record, get the value, add it to the total as long as you have record. But here, what do we have? We have something that may be new to you guys, something called for each. Before you've seen the for statement. For is easy. For, you say integer value from one value to another value, and then you're done. But here, when you have objects, you can use something else. Like in, if you have an object in an array or an object in a list, you can use the for each record. So you can say for each, the first part is the type of the record you're looking, integer. Remember we say int for int x. Here we don't have integer, we have object type, a class, and then the object name that I'm defining. So for every record, the type of it is what? Data view record, in, in what? In a list, usually. This list can be an array, can be uh, some collection, okay? And in this case, I want to get the list that belong to the table customer binding source. So for each data row view that belongs to the uh, data binding source list, I want to do the following. What do I want to do? I want to get the record, I want to get the row, take the column value, and then later on add it to my total. So I define a variable called decimal as here I am casting the value. Now remember you put the same value that you saw in the properties of that column when we looked at the definitions of those columns. If it's decimal you put decimal, if it's integer you put integer, if it's a string you put string. Is that clear? Then you define, you, this is that record was in the list we have a property called draw and then between in the property you'd specify the column name you could specify the column name or you can specify what the number of that column but it's better to specify the column name so you know you don't make mistakes and you know which one you're referencing so after this step it will give me the value that is stored in the total sales after that I take that value, which is S, add it to my total. Instead of S here, I could have just taken all of this, put it in here, and then you're okay. Finally, when you're out of this, you display the result in that label. I have a label called label, label total.text, and then I use the formatting C, which basically the currency, so it will put the dollar sign behind it. All right? So that's all the code that we have. And when does this happen? It happens only when you have current value changed. This is nothing but a name of a data, a method, just a method name. But how do I relate this method name to the action actually? If you remember, we've done this before. If you go to the, if you go to the uh, form itself, go to the binding source, the city binding source, look at the property of that city binding source, one of the options up above is events. If you click on events, notice that is the name of the city, the method. So the current change event is tied to the method that is created there, which is city binding source underscore current change. So I need that. That's done. But also I need another one for position change. So. I want to do this calculation whenever the position change or when the current value is changed. So I do what? I go to the position change in here, 
And also I select the same method that I've created. So now this happens in two places. Whenever the position changed and whenever the current value changed. All right? And that's the end of it. All right? Now let's test it and see what happens. I click to new city sales. Here's my city sale. The first time it gives me zero because there are no records. But if I go next, I got values. And if you add this up, it's 11,000. If you go the next, th so that's how you do one to many relationship and how you do calculations in your uh, forms. Okay? And we are done with this series of videos, okay?